I think we always have the option to see and feel what a situation is. And yes, it could be raining and it could be I just missed my bus and it could be that I'm getting all wet. And there are things that I can still look at to be an optimist. And that's up to us. And it's internal and no one can change that. And like Victor Frankl says, is that they'll never have control over my mind. I'll never be in jail on my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Matt Drinkon. Welcome back to the Eternal Optimist Podcast. Today's guest. I am incredibly excited for today's guest. This is Mr. Hananya Abraham is with me today. And he was recommended to me by Rena Friedman Watts from the Better Call Daddy podcast. And anyone that Rena's ever recommended has been just an absolute rock star. And it's just great to meet Hananya. And I'm going to probably miss spell or miss say his name at least once today. So I'm going to ask for patience in advance. Uh, Hananya, how are you today, my friend? Thank you so much for having me, Matt. Everything is awesome. And you're pronouncing my name perfectly. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, well, let me ask you this. You say everything is awesome. What what goes into everything is awesome for, for you today? Why do you say that? Uh, well, I had a really good coffee. Uh, so that's a, a, a good place to start. Uh, good morning, getting the, getting the kids off to school. I wish I've gotten a little more, a little bit more sleep today, but I guess you know towards the end of the week, it's a little harder to get sleep done as you want to get everything done for the week. So, other than that, you know, just uh, trying to be as as positive as possible. Yeah, well, I, so you had a really good coffee. It's the first thing that came out of your mouth, uh, and, and I know that my wife, she's huge into her coffee. We have this French press. We like press, we grind the beans, we make the coffee. Like it's a ritual, and it's something we really look forward to and enjoy every morning. What is your coffee ritual like? What what do you drink? What does that look like? Okay, so I'll try to be like as short as possible over here. So. Um, <laughs> We, I used to be even, I guess, because I'm crazier than I am. I used to even like, you know, get get our beans from from South America and roast them and really uh, grind them daily. Uh, now we're at a point where, I guess, the mornings are a little bit tighter on time with uh, with all the kids at home. So, uh, it's 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 we have a uh, an espresso virtual machine. And I like like the Mexican blend, which is like the dark green capsule for those of you that might be familiar with it. Um, it has to be in sure. a glass cup and the uh, and the cup has to be sitting with hot water in it first for a little bit because I don't like when the when the coffee comes into it and it the the cup is cold, then it cools okay. down the coffee. but I like my coffee hot. so the co- the coffee cup has to be warmed up first before the coffee goes into it. And uh, just straight up coffee as is. I love the flavor of coffee. So being able to sit yeah. with my wife for a few minutes this morning as the kids are getting off to school was uh, was a nice little treat. I don't get that every day. Heck, yeah. You have a special, like a, cu- a one particular coffee mug for you? Uh, or does it matter? Does it matter? So I would, I used to say yes. Uh, and then kids have a way of getting into daddy's things. And I think after the second daddy's cup that broke, or like, you know what? Any cup will do. But I like having a glass cup. I find it really cool. We get to see what it is that you're drinking. So I try to have a glass mug, but then that nothing specific. I don't have like my mug anymore the way I used to. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for indulging my little coffee, uh, you know, fantasy down here. I, I love rituals. I love morning rituals and things that kind of kick off our day and give us a little bit of energy or a little bit of uh, just peace at being present. And I, I sense that in you. So thanks for indulging that. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit about your bio for our group here so that the team knows who you are, at least on paper. Then you can comment on it as well. Then we'll dive in. So first, uh, it says here, a, you have a distinguished career spanning over a decade now. Uh, you're a seasoned psychotherapist, renowned for expertise working with teenagers, young adults, and families. Your passion lies in fostering open, empathetic communication between adolescents and parents, crafting resilient parenting strategies, and facilitating transformation through trauma-based workshops. And wow, uh, I, I'm even more excited to, to talk now because this is exactly what we need, and this this is this is the place for that. So fantastic! Uh, so let's let's just go ahead and dive. There, there's much more down here, right? Rather than read all of that, let's just dive in. Uh, Hananya, what is something if you can look from today all the way back to when you were born, any any time in your past? What is something that has been very challenging for you uh, to endure or overcome so far in your life? 
Well, I, I, as you're, you know, I, I even knew, I knew about this question before we got on air today and I had one answer. And then this morning I had a different answer. And then as we started talking, I think I had a different answer. And then as you're asking me the question now, I think I have a different answer. So it's sort of like, you know, trying to figure out like the, the right way to talk about it. But I, I think I, and really all four of the, my answers that, that I, that I've been thinking about, um, really come down to having a healthy balance. And I think that's okay. different when you're a little kid, uh, to where you are as a teenager, where the concept of, of, of balancing both your academic, social, and family life is, is going to be something that you want to make sure you're doing right. And you don't want to upset the parents, but yet also, also as a teenager, socially, it's one of the most important things in the world. So you don't want to piss off anybody there. And then you still have academics. You want to make sure that, that, that you're doing right. And then as you get older and go into college and your priorities change, things change again. And then as you become an adult and, you know, I, I hear, here, here I am sitting with you, uh, uh, a, a psychotherapist for, for, uh, 15 years at this point and, and five kids and my own private practice. And, you know, the, the balance has changed as well. So I would say for sure, the number one thing that is, is a constant and is also constantly changing, is that balance between work, life, balance that I need to continue to work on. And, and I think it shows up in so many different ways. So that would be, I would say, my answer, my, my short version answer for that question. Okay, well, then let me dive in a little bit here uh, and investigate, because when I hear five kids, uh, first of all, wow, uh, I thought that my hands were full with three kids, and you've got even more than that. So five kids. So can you talk a little bit about how your balance, how it was when you and your wife got married, and then how, if if you had kids before you got married, or, or kind of talk a little bit about your balance as you started to have one, two, three, four, five, and how your balance continued to shift uh, while you also run a private practice. Can you give us your balance I guess your balanced timeline or your your narrative, please. Yeah, so I, it's a, that's a really good question, and uh, you know I'll try to make it instead of having a, a documentary, you know, breaking it into a podcast here and answering it in, in, in this form. You know, when we uh, when we got married, uh, we had we had our oldest uh, who's sixteen now. She's sixteen, uh, yeah. going on like twenty five or something. I'm not sure exactly what age, but she's going on some like oh. older age. Um, we had her a year yeah. a, a year after after we got married, and uh, at that time we still was uh, in the beginning stages of, of starting my career. Uh, I was in I was in grad school. I actually, long story, I actually switched careers in a certain way. I re always wanted to be a sports psychologist. I love sports. And uh, yeah. I was in school. What sport to, do you love? Like, what's, what's your sport? What's your uh, what's my main sport, one? My sport to watch would be uh, baseball and football. Um, okay. to play, my sport to play would either be uh, basketball or volleyball. Um, and um, Okay. And okay. I, well, just uh, a little bit of curiosity here. Who are your teams? Because I already love you, but let's just make sure that you're not an Ohio State Buckeye. Please, please continue. I, I, uh, I am not. I am a. I am an Arizona Wildcats fan. I I, I beer down. Woo! I am. A, um, yeah, it's something I, I've been a lifelong ever since uh, Sean Elliott and Ski and Steve Kerr days. I've been a yes, Arizona sir. Wildcats yes, fan. Sir. So back um, Mike Baby and Miles Simon back in the day. Yes. I remember those days. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. So okay. I, that, I and I, college basketball is that probably one of my favorite. The March Madness. I, I look forward to every year. Just there's something so authentic yeah. and amazing about it. And I really I. I want to become a sports psychologist, and one of the prereqs I needed to take uh, when I was in when I was in school is in child development and substance abuse and addictions, and it was an eye opener, and it really changed so much for me. And I told my wife, like, I'm, I'm switching. Like, you know, I, any anything that I have that I wanted to do, uh, it's it's completely switching. And that's when we moved to to Connecticut, where 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 I'm located now. This is about about okay. 16 years ago, and um, here I am, you know, talking to you, uh, working predominantly with young adults, teenagers, and, and their families as they are, are looking to work on the family dynamics and things that they might have been through developmentally, trauma-wise, uh, in, in their youth. And that's where a lot of a lot of addictions even come from, which is something that I, that I got trained in when, okay. I, uh, when I first started. So as, and after my, my daughter was born, just starting to figure things out, it wasn't, I, I felt like even at the time where I, I was in grad school and then having a kid, it was, you know, Things were, were 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 moving. They were going, and you know, two years later, my my son, who's now who's now thirteen, 
well, was born. And that was also, that was, you know, he was born during a snowstorm. I'll never forget that. Like, it was pretty uh, crazy times. And uh, it was, it was it's still amazing. And like, you know, okay, you know, we, we still, we're, we're even here. It's my wife, my wife and I, and versus the two. And then, you know, the third one came and it's like, okay, this is like, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I'm getting this vision that the snowstorm coming down, you can't get out of the house. So you're having the, the baby in the house in a tub or <laughs> no, something. No, well, well, no. Well, so, so uh, well, I'll tell you what happened. What happened? Uh, we, thank God we made it to the hospital. Everything was okay. My house that I was living in at the time that I that I was renting was a um, was an oil based uh, heat, and we ran out of oil in the house. So there we are uh, on Christmas Day. The house has no heat whatsoever, and I have a Ooh. three and a half week old in the house, and that was that was insane until I wow in Connecticut the guy, too Woo. yeah convincing the guy to come down to my house um, on Christmas to to go and fill fill me up was uh, an experience that I think my wife and my mother-in-law are still uh, recovering from. Um, hopefully my son doesn't remember it. You know, and there is there is trauma in, in infancy, but hopefully it's not something that he remembers. But, um, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's something that was, it was, it was, that was an experience. And uh, to continue, you know, it's with uh, the third one. Also, it was uh, she was born. She was born more like in the sp- late springtime, early summer. So that was that worked out really well. And, you know, the kid, my, my two older ones were like a little bit older. So it was a little bit uh, you know easier to deal with. The fourth one um, loved her pieces. And she was born during a time that uh, I was actually I switched grad schools and I was traveling into New York City. So I was in the middle of moving to a new location. We're moving to a uh, to, into a new house. We just bought our first house. I was in grad school in New York City and we had just had our fourth child all at the same time. And that was wow. that was a hell of a year. That's when uh, my wife and I like saying we became amateur bartenders uh, dur- during that time. Uh, just to, I guess you could say to, to, to help us out. Um, and it was, it was nice. It was, you know, it was a, it was a cool bonding experience of learning how to make certain drinks and share it together. And, um, it was an okay. amazing, it, it, it worked out. It worked out. Um, you know, I look back at it now, I could smile. I don't know if I could smile during those six, seven months. So I would, then it was all going down, probably even the first year. I don't know if yeah. my wife was here. Maybe she would. Maybe she would answer differently. But um, you know, it was. Okay, so it was, you guys, it was both of you got difficult. extra jobs as bartenders. Is that that we, that's what you're saying. Well, wow. no. What, what what I mean is oh. at home, like oh. we became at really home. good bartenders. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, <laughs> sorry, I, I wasn't clear on that. Yes. Uh, so that <laughs> was. Um, I guess you could say. Well, it helped us with COVID. That's for sure. Because by the time COVID came around, we were professional bartenders. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, it was amazing. Everything, everything was, it was really good. And you know, it, just to seeing the difference in ages and having to be a parent of so many different ages, I think that that sometimes could be could be difficult because you have to wear so many different hats at once. And that's a, for yeah. sure something that um, you know I think about constantly. I know I deal with in my office constantly, but also personally, I deal with you know just having to teenage right now a sixteen year old, a thirteen year old, and having a, a two year old. You know that's you know that's something that there's 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 a lot there, and you know that's that's our job. Uh, I think one of the most important things that I, I I picked up from a mentor of mine a long time ago, and it's something that I I, I talk about in my practice is. Parenting is not about being perfect because there is no su- no such thing as perfect parenting. Parenting is about our kids realizing that we're trying to do the, do the best for them and we're also valuable. We're also human and we make mistakes. And I think kids need to see that because kids need to see that mommy and daddy are, are normal, healthy people. Normal, healthy people make mistakes. They t- take responsibility. They take ownership. And even if they were screaming or they did something wrong, they make they say, my bad. I'm sorry about that. And I shouldn't have raised my voice. And I think that lesson that uh, that we can give it to our kids is is just as important as pretty much any other parenting lesson that we, we, we might be giving them. So, you know, that's, I think, something that I know I'm constantly working on, my wife and I constantly working on. I, I, I do have to give her a big shout out as well, because you think about like from from where we were with between all moving and having the kids and everything uh there's no way this balance that i'm still trying to work on um could i could be where i am if not for her i think she is for sure the bedrock of uh, of this in, in so many ways that um i think that balance which is constant 
a juggling act uh, is something that we do together. And I think having a partner that you're able to sort of bounce ideas off. Um, I, I remember uh, someone recently sent me a clip, I think it was from Brene Brown, you know, talking about how, how her and her husband do it regarding, hey, you know, honey, I only got 60% today. It's like, okay, fine, I'll fiddle in another the uh, you're 40 as well, or, or I'm not sure exactly, I know I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, but like I can only give this amount today. And I think sometimes when you have a partner that's able to go ahead and, and you can say, hey, I got a little bit less today. So the other one has to say, yeah. I, I got you, no problem. And I'm here for that. And I've, I've had that. I'm, I'm, I feel so, so fortunate for, for almost 17 years to be able to have that and, and have a situation where, where the, you know, that person is helping with me with my balance. But obviously, you know, that, that concept of yeah. the balance is, 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 is so important to have because as much as I, I am passionate and I love doing what I do for work, and sometimes it could be hard and difficult, I have to make sure that I'm dad when I come home. I have to make sure that I am, I am husband. Yes. I am not, I am Hanan. <laughs> And I am not, I am not, you know, Mr. Abraham, the, 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 the psychotherapist. So I think that's yeah. something that um, it's probably stabilized a little more now from just where I am career wise with kids and as well. But it's still, you know, there's there's nothing new under the sun. And at the same time, I hear new things every day. So, you know, one person's uh, things that they want to talk about could be just internalizing for them and the way they share it is very different than someone that might have come in last week that's the same exact type of story so you know it's it's and how 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 that it impacts that person is going to affect how that's going to impact me and I might come home with it. So I had a supervisor a long time ago that, you know, he said, you have to have a break in between. So, you know, I, I got an okay. office that used to be two minutes from home, but now I moved it. Let's say I got a different office. I had like, it's like eight, 10 minutes from home. One of my offices that I work in. So I have that car ride where I just, I'm, I'm on my own. There's no phone calls. I'm not calling anyone back. Um, sometimes I'm not even listening to music. I'm just sitting there by myself, just to sort of detox for the day. And I, as I walk okay. into the front door of my house, I'll like step on the O of, of home. And um, I'll, that'll be like my detox button where like, you know, everything like it just like sort of leaves. So like, okay, so therapist is out and like daddy is in and just, you know, having, having that switch. And for me personally, I needed like a, a physical uh, reminder to, in order to go ahead and do that. Some people are able to do that mentally and great for them. And some people need to do it physically and great for them. There's no, there's no right way to do it. There's the right way for you. So I think for yes. everyone to, 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 to be finding the thing that works for them is so important and finding yeah. the way that, that they're able to have that balance and making sure that let's say come, you know, dinner time, which I'm unfortunately, I'm not home at, uh, uh, early enough to be home for dinner time. But when I get home, I know there are emails and texts and, and, and messages is still coming in and until yes. six, seven, eight, nine o'clock, depending on, on who, what, what's happening in the house that night. Like, no, I'm not getting back to you. It's not going to happen at nine o'clock. If I have to go back to my email and take care of some things, I'll do that. Uh, but for the most part, I'll really try not to being, being on my phone at all from, from the hours of, of six to nine, just to make sure that I am creating that balance and that balance doesn't have to be, okay, first I'm this, now I'm this. The balance is also yes. about, okay, I'm, I'm shifting and I'm, I'm changing out of this. And if I need help, i.e. putting away the cell phone in a drawer or something like that, I need to do that. And that's fine. And I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. And, you know, if I get a text, someone, oh, I couldn't get through to you. I'm like, okay, that's great. Like, I'm not in my office and I'll get back to you when I get back to you. And, you know, it's not Certainly. something that uh, um, I, I've, it's taken a while, but I, I've learned for it not to bother me the way it used to because I want to get back yes. to people and I want to be able to, to be on top of things. And sometimes it still is hard. You know, sometimes I would love to have my phone on me and this is what yes. is best for the situation. And I think that really helps creating that uh, balance. I think this is one of the biggest challenges for me uh, that has cost me every relationship leading up to when I finally met Julie and we got married is my phone was always on me. I never turned it off. It was like I was cheating on my relationship with my cell phone because I never turned the business off. And I love the way you've been able to create your own recipe on the way home. You disconnect, you just have your you time and then you step on the O of home as your switch. Uh, I, I have my switch with me right here in my hand. Whenever I finish up work virtually, I have this little heart it has uh, the word yes written on it. Uh, it also has the word no written on it. Uh, so I grab this and I say a little serenity prayer that helps me to transform from coach Matt to dad and husband Matt. Uh, and it's the same principle, same values. 
I simply turn off my phone. I put it in a phone jail and I just go and, and playfully parent. Uh, and, uh, and, and love that. That's my way of doing it. Is there any other thing you might have tried before the home? Because I know this is a big challenge for a lot of the people listening to our show is we're entrepreneurs or we're people that run, run really fast. And then how do you turn it off or how do you make that transition? So you figured it out. I've got a little something I do. How many things did you have to try before you got to the home as the way you do it now? Uh, that's a good question. Um, what's coming to mind, the two things that come to mind is uh, I I would listen to music. I, like I had like a, my, my own mix that I put together that I would listen yeah. to that for a little bit. But then I realized I was getting more into the music than getting it to myself, um, and, which is nice. And I really like music. And I also needed to get to, to – well, the way I like saying it is making a U-turn. I have to make a U-turn and get back to self so that I become, I become dad. And that was, that was very, very important. And, and that's something that um, taking the music out of it so it made me be more concentrating on self was very, very helpful. Um, and it was, it, was, it was by chance of, of, uh, of stepping on the O of home because I, yeah. it was during that time when my, when my supervisor at the time mentioned it to me, I, I didn't even have that. And I remember we got a new mat in the back of the house and there was some lettering or some button that I could press. And that's where I got the idea from. And then couple of years ago, getting the mat in the front of the house, um, that was something that I thought, I'm like, oh, okay, I like this. Like, this is, a, this is my thing. And I think it's also important to realize is that that button changes constantly. It's sort of like um, the way I look at it, let's say like a favorite food or a favorite drink or a favorite way to sleep, right? We're not going to all sit here and say, well, I sleep in this exact position every single night since I'm an infant until I'm in my 40s and 50s. Uh, we change because our bodies change and our, our our taste buds change. And I think for what we need to detox and to change that balance changes as well. So for right now, I know that this is working for me. And in a couple of months, it might not. I I don't know yet. I have to stay curious with it. As a mentor of mine uh, likes saying is um, ABC, the, the situation. Always be curious about the situation. So I think that's it's really helpful to be able to be in self in a way where, okay, is this working? Oh, it's not working. So I need something else. Okay. And, and that's okay. If I need to go to, uh, you know, to a gas station to go get, you know, a coffee or, or, or a snack or something. And that's how I, I sort of switch it up. That's okay. That's what I need right now. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not like I need to have a ritual. The way I like talking about it, um, is as parents. And I think as an individuals as well, we want to be able to be palm trees and not pine trees. Palm trees are very flexible and they can withstand tornadoes and hurricanes. But put a pine tree in Florida, not going to last so long because it's going to snap eventually by the end of the season. As beautiful as they are, and they may have greenery on them all year round, but they don't move and they're, they're not able to, to sway back and forth. So they're beautiful and they're stubborn. And they and in heavy, heavy situations, uh, heavy wind situations, they're going to snap. But we want to be, as parents, we want to be able to be pine, uh, palm trees where we're able to be flexible so that we can move in all directions, which is what, you know, I, the trees are able to do in both, you know, uh, Southern California and, and, and Florida because they can be, be more flexible. And I think that's our job is to be as flexible as possible because our, our job is not just to be a parent because that's my middle name. It's more like, no, I need to be a parent because that's what that child needs. And I have to be a parent for them. I have, can't be a, a parent for what I think is right. I have to be a parent for what they need. And if they need certain things, that means obviously I have to be in a certain place and I have to be happy and healthy within self in order to me to, to help others. And the way I'm going to be happy and healthy for self is going to change. And it's going to be different. The same way you're not going to wear that same shirt for the next 50, 60 years because either things change, the body changes or it gets worn out. The same thing regarding what internally what we need changes. And, and I think that's something that uh, it's, it took a little bit of time to accept. But I think first creating the awareness to that and then being it, once I was able to create that awareness, the, the acceptance was sh followed shortly thereafter. How has your journey on being flexible versus more rigid, being more of a palm tree than a pine tree. How has your journey evolved since child number one, 16 years ago, all the way through now you have the fifth child as a two. How has that worked for you? Oh gosh. Um, well, I would say if that 
16 years ago, I would say it's like day one of being a gymnast and now okay. regarding flexibility. And I would say now it's like being a Olympian in that, in that flexibility. Uh, you know, it, it, there, there are so many things that change, like, you know, just think about how strict I am on things or lack thereof in a certain way and seeing what is yeah. important and, and what, what are the priorities. And I would say one of the, one of the biggest lessons is, is realizing that, I used to need to put my kids to bed at a certain time because I needed them to go to bed at a certain time. And Oh, yes. Talk more about this because I think I'm and, kind of in this place right and, now. <laughs> and now yeah. I would say with, with with my son, with my with my baby, it's more like, yes, I know you have a bedtime, but if let's say grandparents are over or it's the holiday time and you want to stay up a little bit more because your cousins are over, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And it's it's my problem that I have to deal with that. Yeah, I would love to go to bed so I can chill a little bit more. I don't have to have your ba- eyes in the back of my head on right now. And he's also allowed to be up. Like, it's okay. I think life is about uh, the experiences that we have and, and what better experiences than having family. And if, for, if I'm going to say, well, nope, it's your bedtime. Let's go to bed right this second. He's in the middle of doing something with his cousins that he doesn't see that often. I'll be like taking away some some amazing memories. And if that's on me. I have to suck it up and say, Hanania, stop it. Like, he could go to bed a little later. That's okay. He doesn't have to go to bed this time. Uh, so... I also think, though, for a parent to say, hey, I need my kid to go to bed is also acceptable as well. And there's nothing wrong with that because because mommy, daddy need time as well. They're they're, they're human beings. So I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't keep, keep, keep to a schedule. And why are we doing it? And that comes back to that ABC of the situation. Okay, what am I doing right now? Why am I being strict on bedtime? And if, let's say, they need to say it's middle of finals time or, you know, they just came back late from 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 something... They just came back late from something. Um, doesn't mean that they have to be in bed within 30 seconds. There could be a little bit of like a leeway okay. and that's okay. So, you know, that's, okay. th- I think that's something that is, is constantly evolving and changing with the situation that, that, that we're dealing with. And it's our job as parents to know what that situation is and to assess it in a way to know how to deal with it. And, you know, just to give like another like small, a small example, uh, you know, I, I think both my wife and I don't like it when there's um, uh, cabinets or drawers that are left open in the kitchen. I haven't yet met, met the parent that likes when those things are left open. But the question is, when, we are and how are we going to make a comment about it? And I think it's important okay. to know what's happening within that person. I was, okay, what's happening right now? Yeah, they left that thing open. And are they late for the bus? So wait, I'm going to teach them a lesson to close it, but they might miss the bus now. So now they're going to be late and I have to drive them. So is it worth it to teach a lesson right now? Or is it something that I can do on my own, suck it up, suck up my own ego, and then come back to it later and say, hey, sweetie, like we talk about this all the time, like don't do things just for yourself. Be ready for the next person as well. So, you know, so whether whether it's moving things out of the way or closing things up, like other people want to have this as well and 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 let that happen, but you have to, you know, pay it forward and, and get it ready for the next person or whatever it is. And closing the drawer or closing the cabinet is one of the ways to go ahead and do that. And, and you know, that'll be greatly appreciated if you can do that. And it's okay for me to close it. And if, if even though I'm trying to teach a lesson and I think a parent has to really have a, an inside balance regarding what am I doing right now? Am I teaching a lesson for them or am I trying to teach them a lesson for me? And our job is mm. to be teaching lessons for them, not for us. Parenting is not for us. Parenting is for them. And I think that's that's an area we go back to, to that to that balancing is why am I doing this right now? Why am I upset? If my child's doing A, B and C. What's happening? And I think when we're able to ask that question and assess what the room is like, oh, okay, so it's me, it's my problem because I'm going to have to go around picking up all the laundry. Okay, so then if I don't want to do it, that means I have to teach them properly. Oh, okay, so I should teach them that when they, when they take off their clothes at night before they get into bed, you know, we, there should be separate labeled hampers for the different things for how that thing is washed. So it's on me to make sure that there are labels and there are the proper places for those items that they're not going to leave it on the floor. I'm giving them the opportunity and then talking to them and saying, 
hey, I know sometimes it could be hard. Look what I did. Is there anything else I can do to help you remember to go ahead and do it? So instead of it being something where it's, I can't believe every single morning we have to, I have to scream at you about, are you, I'm getting upset about not having, uh, you, you You haven't put away your stuff yet. And that could obviously be, be very discouraging uh, as a parent and also as a child. Um, there's a rule, yes. um, there's a rule I think it comes from actually, yeah, it comes. I think it comes from uh, one of the books that I that, that I would recommend, the uh, Explosive Child by uh, Dr. Uh, Ross Green. Um, highly, highly uh, recommended book. Um, and he talks okay. about a, a understanding uh, a, a, from the parenting perspective from it if for easily frustrated, chronically, uh, chronically inflexible children, which. Honestly, I think nowadays is, is most children. I don't think it's anything more than anything else. But um, the concept I think what he talks about is uh, the the three to one or the four to one ratio. That for every three okay. or four, I recommend four compliments is when you could do one reprimand and keeping it to that ratio. So if you have a child that's uh, pre teenage years and they're starting to go into their own world, like they're the only things that exist. And they're leaving towels on the floor of the bathroom. They're leaving toothpaste in the sink. They're they're taking chips for snack, and they're just leaving it on the counter, all spilled out, and not even closing the cabinets. And taking off their shoes right where they where they did their snacks by the counter, and just left it there for the next morning, that for mom to trip over as she's going to make her coffee. As if they're yes. doing all these things, and why are we getting upset at them? Are we getting upset at them for us? Are we getting upset at them because they should know better and there should be a rhyme and reason why things are being done or not done? And there should be a rhyme. There should be a time and a place for where things should be put and how they should be put away. And it's not just about, you know, you can never take snacks again. It's like, okay, let's try to figure it out. What can we do to make it? that you're doing what you're supposed to, preparing your, your, your backpack the night before, and you're also not leaving popcorn on the floor as you're making your lunch bag for tomorrow, as you're preparing your snacks. How can we do that? And there's, um, I think, a concept that, um, I don't know, I forget what the terminology is called, but um, um, in the book, Atomic Habits, are you familiar with, uh, with Atomic Habits? Uh, Very book? familiar, yes. Yeah, so yeah, I know he talks about it in the air, the concept of, of, of I guess the best way to say it is like association or a healthier association where where you have something that you don't like doing with something that you like doing. Uh, the way it was first yeah. brought, to, brought to my attention was I was in a training and, and we were talking about this concept with uh, how, to, how to deal with this with teenagers. And she said, you know, one of the things that she likes doing is she loves showering. But she hates flossing her teeth. So she took a pack of the, of the single floss picks and attached it to her shampoo. So now every time she's in the shower, she's also going to be uh, using the floss pick, which I thought was a genius idea. Interesting. So having that concept of, of, of an association of doing something together with something else that you like doing. So let's say it's uh, you're winding down and they're going to be, you know, there's a certain game they wanted to play. Okay, so let's say you're going to download the game for them on, 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 a, uh, on a, their device. And you want to be able to say, okay, no problem. When all these things are done, so when you take care of the snacks neatly, when you put your knapsack in front of the house, when your shoes are where they're supposed to be, and you take care of all your hygiene that you're supposed to, then no problem. You can watch the game or play play the game. So there's a association. It's more than just an incentive. It's more like, well, for the game to happen, this has to happen. So it becomes something where it's it, it becomes a habit of, all right, I'm going to take snacks, make sure I'm cleaning up around me, I'm going to brush my teeth, do A, B, C, D, E, and then I could go ahead and have a few minutes to, to my game. So it becomes a association. I'm like, oh my God, I'm such a slave here. I have to clean up all the time. And that's obviously not what, what is meant to be. And, and sometimes, you know, depending on the child, it can come off or they can make us sound like we're like, we're like the worst people in the world for making them close the cabinet or close up the bag of chips and put the, and put the clip back on it and put it away. Like, oh my God, we are the worst people ever. And, and, yes. and what is it that we hear? And, and when we hear something like that, I think it's also important uh, to, to realize when our kids talk that way, there's a way that we have to react to that because most of the time, I, w I would, yeah, for sure, for sure, most of the time, if not even more than that, I would say that our kids are not looking to be flippant and be a chutzpah to, to, to a parent. It's more like they're looking for a certain attention or a reaction or a response. Yes. And it's Certainly. our job to, like we we're talking about before, regarding taking away that ego. 
to make sure like, okay, what did I just hear? And what were they trying to say? And what is the point of this right now? So putting it, it putting it in a, in a, in a way where for ourselves, where it's not about, well, I can't believe you just said that to me. How dare you say something like that to me? Well, why did they say that? What's going on? What are they upset about? Oh, okay. You know, they, they just upset because they, they broke up with a, with a friend or a girlfriend at school, or they didn't do as well as they thought on the test. And, you know, they're, they, 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 they spilled on themselves on, on, by the lunch and they were dirty the whole day. In other words, didn't sleep all the night before. So now they come home and say, supper sucks. I'm like, you're the worst cook ever. And like, I can't stand being here. It's not a reflection on us. It's a reflection yeah. of what they're going through. And that's our job. Yes. Right? That's why I talked about before making a U-turn. Okay, what's happening right now? Asking that question. Yes. Like, what's happening? What am I doing? Or what am I not doing? Um, how, do I, how do I get a bigger picture in order to go ahead and um, understand what the situation is? And I think that the lesson of the ABC is really helpful. And, and something as well, I know we talked about it off the air, this concept of, of mindfulness, and, and, and which I, I interpret and I, I talk about in my practice as, as awareness, I think is also very, very, very helpful because, and, and also the same thing we were talk, like we were talking about regarding getting into bed and finding that comfortable spot. It's going to be a little bit different almost every day, just the exact spot for you're doing. I think, I think awareness and mindfulness works the same way where it's going to be different for every person. There is no right way to go about doing mindfulness. There's your way and your way that works for you. And it's going to be different for, for every person. So I think realizing that is something that is important in order to get started. But what it's pretty much doing is for the, I guess, they, you know, there are so many different people that talk about it so many ways, but the way I understand it, it's, it's being able to go into self and to create an, a non-judgmental awareness of where I am, who I am, and where, and, and, and what I am able to deal with and cope with on my own right now. And, and, and that's something that, you know, as parents, if we can have those little moments where we have the cup of coffee and we're sitting down, where, you know, we're, we're, we're taking a second to, to stretch our legs or, uh, or to have, have a, a moment of silence where we're able to just take a break. It's key so that when those other situations come up of, I hate you, you're the, you're the worst parent ever. The food here sucks. Like it's, it's like eating in a blank, whatever, you know, fill, fill, fill it in the way, any way you like, where those things don't hurt us anymore because, because we realize that, oh, okay, they're in a bad place. But we can only realize that if they're in a bad place, if we're in a good place. And that's going to come from taking care of ourselves. That's going to come from that mindfulness. That's going to come from having the good cup of coffee, from making making that that U turn. And I think that's something that you know, as much as I talk about this in my practice a lot, it's for sure something that I deal with personally as well. And it's 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 a constant. I'm not going to say struggle, but it's a constant working for in order to get to the place where I'm I'm going to be better. And as long as that person has a has that motto of, what am I doing different today? than I did, was yesterday, and how can I be better tomorrow than I am today? And I think having that constant focus of what, am I, what can I keep on doing, I think that will uh, constantly help the situation because the way you're dealing with this 16-year-old is gonna be different than the way you're, you're dealing with another 16-year-old, your next 16-year-old, and it's, it's, ju it's just different. It's not better, same, or worse, yes. it's just different. And I think that's something that, you know, that we can, we can uh, really internalize more as well. Uh, yeah, I'm super curious here because you've said ABC. Every time I hear ABC, I keep thinking always be closing. You know, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, Alec Baldwin back in the day. And now you're giving me new meaning to ABC, always be curious. And I love this. And I'm curious about one thing. You continue to, maybe this is just me playing this out in my head. You continue to use the word and frequently. And you know, to me, and is a builder word. It's, it's the word of the eternal optimist, one of them. It's the opposite of but. Uh, and when I hear you say and so frequently, uh, I'm just curious, am I, am I just hearing things here, making up my own narrative, or are you intentionally using the word and frequently? <laughs> I, I would say it's a little bit, a little bit already subconscious that, I, that I'm doing it. As a other, a, a colleague that I work with, she uses it a lot when we're, when we're talking with, we, we'll do some like trauma workshops together and someone will, will, will make a comment and, and we'll answer it in a way of, yeah, you're supposed to be doing this and this. So it's not like either okay. or, it's more like, do this and do this and do this. But just, I think emphasizing the and, which I guess I something I don't even realize I do, I guess, in, 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 in most of the time, at least when I'm talking on this uh, on this subject, um, I think it's something that you know we can all we can all see that there's 
there, there's more to the answer than just the answer that that's given. Um, and when it comes to something like this, you know, I, as much as I can say, I love what I do, and I'm, I'm, I consider myself a good parent, and I professionally, I'm in a place where I work with this this population and these type of of issues. I don't think I'm a expert. And I don't think there is any one answer because there's so many different ways to go about it. And whatever works yes. for you works for you. So yes. it's 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 something that I think is so important that we have to realize and and to stay curious, right? That's to to, to see what what's working. I know there are so many things my wife and I have done with my with our two oldest ones that uh, for my third and fourth, especially my fourth, is not working, and we have to come up with like a whole new game plan. You know, it's uh, it's uh, I guess you could say in some ways yeah. it's like um, I don't know the the movie that's coming to mind is Little Giants, where you know they lose every single time to the Cowboys, every single time except that one time where they do this these couple of trick plays, and next thing you know they win yep. this one game, right? You know, and, and and that's all that matters, and and that's what we're supposed to be doing every single day, every single moment is a new battle, is a new game that we're supposed to be playing, and and it's intentional because that's what's supposed to be right here, right now, and my job changes all the time with that. So I don't think I have all the answers. Hopefully my experience and, and this feeling of going inside constantly is, is, has been helping. You know, I, I, parenting doesn't end and never ends. And obviously it changes from, you know, when, when you're thinking about having a child up until your, your child becomes a parent and maybe even grandchild as a, a, gra- a grandparent as well. And you're uh, hopefully we're, 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 we're all blessed to see that. But you know, that, that concept of seeing, uh, there's so many different stages is, is, is a blessing and we all want it. And that's going to happen by, by us trying to be as curious with self as possible so that I know what to do in that situation as best as possible. Great answer. Thank you. Uh, I've, I've taken so many notes here. We could go in so many directions. So I'll, I'll go to a different direction here. I'd like to go to your podcast, uh, which has the most catchy, amazing name. Can you talk a little bit about your podcast, uh, how it came to be, and, and why you do the podcast? So uh, I, it was never on my on my radar. I, I and I think you know, let's say during the pandemic, there was I, I, a lot of a lot of podcasts that came about, and I know that's where it really took off for for a lot of people, and and being something that can be, uh, I guess, is a, a new a new line of business. I like the concept of being able to to, to listen to. Uh, a show that I'm intrigued in or a topic or an individual that I'm intrigued to hear from, uh, hearing more about them when and where I want without having to wait for commercials or turning the radio to radio dial to make sure to be at this radio station at this time. So it was always intriguing to me in that sense. And I've had a few podcasts that I've listened to that I've really learned a lot from both both information-wise, but also um, from a interviewer's point of view. And obviously, as some someone that uh, you know asks questions for a living, I, I think I've I've uh, built up a lot of confidence in what, in what it means to actually ask a question and ask the right questions. So I think between all those things and wanting to do more than just sit in an office and in both in individuals or or groups or families, and which I love doing, uh, I wanted to have a, a further reach regarding being able to talk about parenting and on a much broader scale. Yeah. And that's where the concept originally came from. And it's been a, a, an amazing journey starting this. I think it was um, mid-August where where we started the the podcast. And uh, I think that concept of where the name came from was parenting is easy, said no one ever, because I don't think no one's ever... I, ever said it and it's it's that doesn't mean it's not amazing doesn't mean it's not awesome and it could be the thrill and and the job of a lifetime and it also depends on what our attitude is and when we're able to go ahead and see that hey someone else is dealing with this also so this issue is something that someone else is dealing with. Oh, really? So there are other parents that can learn about dentistry issues, or uh, or, or or about nursing issues, or about uh, things that you know the husband can be more more aware of as uh, a parent uh, as their spouse is in is is pregnant and how to how to take care of the other children that are there. You know, just like small topics that you know that we've that we've covered, and there's so much that could be that could be given over. And I want people to realize and feel that, oh, I'm not alone. I'm not the only crazy person out there. I'm not the only one that's feeling blank. You know, I want people to realize that, you know, we're all going through this and let's speak to people 
that that are also going through this and maybe have a certain, whether it's perspective, I don't want to say healthier perspective, but maybe that's the right way, right, the right word to say, like a healthier perspective on, on this, more of a clarity on this specific topic and just taking topics a little bit, a little bit. The reach has been phenomenal from, uh, from, from India, Italy, Brazil and and New Zealand and Australia and uh, just having people from all over the world contact me and, and just wow. it, it's been it's been so cool to see and uh, obviously there's so much I needed to learn because I, I, it's not like uh, all right let, let me do a podcast and then the next day just start a podcast there's so many things that go that go into play it's not you know it's it's uh, I think something that anyone that wants to do it I, I, I encourage it but also know what you're getting yourself into you know that's, there's a lot yeah. of work there and there's it's amazing. And it's, it's, it's awesome. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate. And that's in a way through my podcast and, and, and interviewing Rena, that's how, that's how you and I met. So uh, I'm very, very fortunate for that. Yes, sir. Parenting is easy. Said no one ever. I'm looking at your Instagram page right now. I got the YouTube channel up. These are all places, uh, that we can follow Nanya. Uh, and yeah, so the Parenting is Easy podcast is, is where I'm at on Instagram right now. It's, it's got some reels, some tips. It's got a bunch of stuff on it. You got to check this out, team. We got, yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, so I'd love to uh, start to pivot here because we've got about 10 more minutes to go. And there's so many questions I didn't get a chance to ask you yet. So I want to ask you one. Uh, you work with teenagers and parents and you you help them and i'm curious why did you start now i didn't get a chance to ask you yet why you went this path because you made a shift when you were in grad school and, and why this path for you ananya okay we only have 10 minutes all right so i gotta do this fast over here um uh, i i also i had a i, I had I, I had a mentor that when i first started out unfortunately he's, he's not with us anymore but he said when you're starting out of the field he said take any type of job or situation, don't focus on anything specific. Just go from okay. pediatrics to, to geriatrics, you know, uh, nursing home to uh, to, to me- mental health facilities and 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 inpatient facilities. Take anything and everything because you want to be able to have to have that experience. And I'm fortunate to be able to have pretty awesome opportunities as as an intern when I when I was when I was a rookie in the field from so different walks of life and 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 diverse backgrounds of uh, of my clients and situations that I was in. It was something that I sort of I gravitated to over time of working with teenagers and young adults that I, that just resonated with me. Uh, the way I, I I look at it, I'm very very fortunate. And I think about it all the time that I had I had an amazing teenage years of my life. Um, I had an amazing time in high school. Loved high school. Loved, loved every second of it. And I know, unfortunately, a lot of people don't have that experience and don't get to. Um, really enjoy themselves for four straight years and i'm i feel very very fortunate yeah. and to be able to help people in the in those areas of transitioning through a huge into a huge stage in life and having real academic responsibilities probably possibly for the first time where social the social the social life is such an important part of growth and 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 development to be able to assist with that you know there's the way i look at it also there's like um there's a tree of life and it's the teenage and young adult years and i i I, teenagers for me are probably about the ages of about 14 15 on the younger a on the younger end till about okay i hope they're not going to kill me but i would say till about 23 24 on the older end so uh it's not just from 13 to 19 i think there's developmentally there's there's Things have shifted. There has there has been a shift. Um, if people want to know more information on that, they could read from uh, Dr. Leonard Sachs, who talks about this a lot and how things have changed over the years. But um, he has a book called uh, "Boys Adrift." Um, I forgot what else. Yeah, he has a few few a few amazing books on on this topic of developmentally how things change. But but basically dealing with dealing with that age, it's been something that um, I just I'm not going to say fell on my lap, but I just gravitated to just based on where I was and where my career was and, and loving it and wanting to work with it. My, my motto that I have, I have, I have on my website, which is cuftherapy.com, and maybe we'll, I'll give it to you so you can put it into the show notes. Um, my motto is how to like your kids as much as you love them. And that's because we all love our kids. And we'll, do, we'll bend over backwards for them, but we don't always like them. And sometimes we wish they just went away and we could just press the mute button and we can't <laughs> and we have to learn how to deal with that and by the way when i say these words i say it with a smile on my face because this applies to me tenfold uh this is not something that i just teach it's something that i need to learn as well uh 
So uh, it goes yes, really far when 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 I'm able to sort of put words to it and be able to say it in a way where it's it's something I know I need to work on it as well, and and something that I really love to work with um, in in that sense. And uh, it's awesome. It's a, I'm, I feel very very blessed to be able to to be doing this way. Fantastic. Well, this is uh, this has been great getting to know you and speak with you today. And I'd like to uh, move us to the place where you share all the places we can find you. So if we want to find out more about you and learn with you, where do we go first? And just please give us the, the places that we can find you. Ooh, um, okay. So that's a really, really good question. Um, I would say if you want to find out more about me and about my practice, um, you can uh, email me through contact, contact me through my email address, through my uh, website, which is cuftherapy.com. That's C-Y-U-A-H therapy.com. And you can sign up for the newsletter even though the newsletter will hopefully be starting to go out within 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 about a week or two. And um, we're also uh, right now on Instagram Twitter handle is uh, the Instagram handle is parenting is easy said no one ever spelled out as is except for the O N E instead of O N E it's the number one um, you could get yes. updates there as well from from the work that I do the podcast uh, can be found anywhere you find podcasts it's parenting is easy uh, podcast and it's a comic picture of myself that um, you know has a kid sneaking out of a window so uh, it's something that uh, I guess what it was it was fun to make because that was something that we all have to deal with in some way shape or form it may not be a kid sneaking out of a house it could be a kid sneaking an extra candy bar it's not something you know that's it's, it's that specific but that's where that's where the goal is and I I believe when we when you add the concept of humor into what it is that we do it goes so much further regarding the things that uh, we're able to accomplish and work with together with uh, with our children so i think the humor is a very big part of it and we like to throw in uh, a little bit of humor into into this into this world which i think is uh, an 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 everlasting but yet an, an amazing amazing and very very fruitful world of parenting so to find the podcast wherever you were whether it's a, a YouTube channel and and there's also on Apple Podcast and Spotify and and uh, and Buzzsprout and okay uh, that's where you can find the uh, the uh, podcast um you can find me on LinkedIn as well at Khananya Abraham and uh, if you have any questions you can email me as well to to my podcast email which is parenting is easy podcast at gmail dot com fantastic thank you and Hananya, I've, I've got uh, uh, three last questions here in the lightning round to wrap things up today. And uh, so the first question uh, is around books. And you've already recommended a couple today. You recommended first uh, The Explosive Child by Dr. Ross Green. You recommended The uh, Boys Adrift by Dr. Leonard Sachs. And I'm curious if you have one or two other books that come to mind that have been impactful to you. What other couple of books might you recommend to our listeners? Um, are we talking about personal books? We're we talking about, about about books on um, uh, on parenting. Like where I could there's Great some, I, have like, I have a whole list over here. So just anything that you have found influential or impactful in your life in any genre. Okay, so the first thing that comes to mind, I'm looking for my copy over here, but I think I, I just lent it out. Um, is uh, Victor Frankel's Man's Search for Meaning. Um, I think both personally and professionally, uh, that would have to be the first one on my uh, on my list. I I I I, I have purchased that book so many times uh, to to give out to people, to give out to clients and friends. Uh, it's it's hands down, I think, one of the best pieces of literature written in the past century. So um, that's something that, uh, agree. that 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 I would I would highly recommend. Uh, the other one is a little more. Uh, I have another two, so I'll just uh, I'll throw in like two little squeeze in over here. So the first is um, the teenage a teenage whisperer by Mike Linderman. Um, it's a really really good book, and I really enjoy the concept of of learning learning about teenagers. I learned a lot from that book. I found it very very helpful. Um, and also, uh, the body keeps a score. Bessel van der Kolk, who I consider a mentor. I'm very lucky to get some supervision from him. So uh, he, that's something I would recommend his book as well regarding. Uh, uh, how, how trauma affects affects the brain and how that manifests itself into adulthood. Uh, so I think for for both parents and for and for the reader themselves, it could be very 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 helpful. And honestly, anything by Dan Siegel. Dan Siegel, I think, is also a monumental f- figure in the world of of uh, parenting and psychology. Um, I recommend any one of his books. Thank you, thank you. Okay, good. 
Good. Well, let's go to uh, to music then. If there's a certain artist or song or genre that really inspires you and fills your bucket, what might be your your musical choice? I don't know. I don't know why, but right right now, my my song that, I, that I'm listening to is um, "Believer" by Magic Dragons. That's the one that's just been 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 uh, been uh, been with me. Um, and then there's uh, an F song. Uh, that uh, about 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 messing up and about like you know I hope you're there for me I, I'm forgetting the name of the song but a uh, big fan of, of uh, a lot of his music as well right now that's what's coming to me but there okay. I think music music is something that really is so personal that different times like you know there could be I could listen to Kansas the dust in the wind obviously that song came out a really long time ago but uh, every now and then it turned out where what, what I'm feeling like that song get to me and it just like you know I'll get a little, little glassy eyed and you know it really depends on on what w- what the mood is to be honest fantastic okay well we are down to the final question and I'll give you the last word today Hananya the final question the name of our show is the eternal optimist podcast when I say the words eternal optimist, what does that mean to you? Actually, a person came to mind, my grandfather. Uh, so when you when, when you say those words, that for just someone that was always positive constantly, I mean, he's not with us anymore, but uh, that, he's just someone that, that stuck, st- 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 sticks out to me as someone that was internally an optimist and constantly always saying the good in things. And I think we always have the option to see and feel what a situation is and yes it could be raining and it could be i just missed my bus and it could be that i'm getting all wet and there are things that i can still look at to be an optimist and that's up to us and it's 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 internal and no one can change that and like victor frankl says is that they'll never have control over my mind i'll never be in jail on my mind and i get to decide that and if we make it internal inside of us if we stay curious and, and and we bring it inside we make we make a u-turn like okay so what can i be grateful for what can i what can i what can i say that is going to be more on the optimist side of things which i get to decide no one else does so that's what i think of my grandfather and that's the lesson that i'm that i'm thinking of right now 